Hey everybody, so uh, welcome back to Bow Journey and um, we keep talking about starting a young horse and kind of what I'm looking for when we start a young horse. And uh, we don't want to use a flag or use things to desensitize horses. Um, I understand the concept of the word, but I think it's been blown out of proportion with um, horse training. So we want them to be sensitive to things that they need to be sensitive to, not reactive, and we want them to be able to regulate things that they shouldn't be sensitive about. So um, <clears throat> when we're using a flag, it's an extension of our arm, plus it's other things that we want to use um, to kind of help them find regulation. So if you watch the first couple videos with him, he was he was kind of uh, all over the place and really struggling a little bit because he didn't know. So we got to teach him um, what he doesn't have to be worried about. So if we put a saddle on him right away, like a lot of people will just put a saddle on a horse <clears throat> when they turn three and start riding him. And what happens is you have a horse that then um, doesn't understand uh, regulation, how to use their body, and then we're putting weight on them. Um, and we're kind of trying to force them to do something, uh, whether we think we are or not, when we put a saddle on them and they don't know how to use themselves properly on their own and how to have self-carriage, which is the horse understands how to use their body without a rider on it, that's what self-carriage is, is that then we're just trying to uh, manipulate them from their back with additional weight on them on how to use themselves. So as I work with him, I said, I wanna be able to put my hand up and have him use that flag for pressure towards the, the, the front shoulder and have him move. And if I come back this way, just pick up my hand have him want to rock back across, pick up my hand this way, have him want to rock back across. If I don't use my flag, I want to just have him start to work off the, the aid of my hand and where that's sending him to. So I really like that. Um, it's, it's, it hasn't been that long, it's been a few days. Now I'm getting that licking and chewing. And if you can start to get your horse to understand those cues, then when we go to get on them, it's gonna be a lot easier and we don't want him to have any tension. Tension is what makes a horse get um, do things that we don't want them to do and in this in this situation is that when we when we take a horse and we put him into a flight response and so if I just ask him to go forward and he doesn't know how to horses go forward typically because they're worried about something and so I don't want him to be worried about something I want him to know that as we start to go forward that he can relax into that forward gate whether that's a, a, a trot or a canter or the three speeds in those gates so I want him to feel comfortable that it's a na natural step to go into that next gate um, you have to learn how to walk before you can crawl, or you have to learn how to crawl before you can walk, walk before you can try, so you can jog, and and jog before you can run. And if you try to, if you try to jog bef before you can walk really well, you're probably going to fall down. So, so we got to teach him. So I want to teach him how can he move the front end, how can he move the hind end. I love that. How can we move the front end back over this way, the hind end, and then if I ask him to go around me, I'm going to ask him just to walk around me. So. He's a little stuck right now. I'm gonna put that flag, excuse me. I'm gonna put that flag where my calf would be. And this, this will tell me a lot because if he goes to get stuck off the feel of my hand, then I know he'll get stuck going forward a little bit. So I'm going to ask him to work off this way here, but I want him to be nice and light, not worried. Uh, so once we get that, that down, he's understanding what the flag means as an aid of mine. Then I can start to use the flag for other things because we're building trust. So now if he's walking around here and I want to start to wave it, we never want a horse to go forward off of the flag just waving indirectly in the air. So if you see he stops, I'll bring the flag back to where my calf would be. So he stops, I'll bring the flag there. So I don't want him to want to run when he does this, and I don't want him to want to stop or put his head up. So ask him, I'll redirect that flag, but I want him to understand that the flag is just flying out here. He doesn't have to worry about that flag or whatever object it is. I'm asking for him just to continue walking forward. So what it kind of teaches me with this horse, uh, as he's learning this, is that if he gets nervous, he might want to stop. So now I drop my hand down to a neutral position, and he stops and faces me. Uh, so what this is teaching him, it's telling me a lot about him, because when I first started with him, 
if he got nervous, he would want to pull backwards. He wouldn't want to run past anything. Um, and then as soon as I um, got through that, then he wanted to stop. So it's about how we can keep ask him to just keep going forward without being worried. So I like how he's giving me space right here too. So in the first couple videos, he was wanting to kind of be in my space. If I ask him to back up now, it's a nice soft back up, um, real easy. We want that with our horse. I'll come a little closer so you can see the, the rope. I just want to think it and have him back up with me. So we want to make our horses light and responsive. We don't want to make them, we don't want to, we don't want them to be sensitive and reactive. We want them to be light and responsive to us, not, I'll say that again, we don't want them to be light and responsive, not sensitive and reactive. Reactive is not a good thing. That's usually based off of fear. So um, now if he's standing to my right, I want him to step behind me. I'm just gonna put my hand up. Then I'll come with the flag. Now if I'm standing on this side, let's put my hand up. Good boy. So see how I, I'm gonna always try to not use the tool if I don't need the tool. I'm gonna try to use me. I want to be the main focus of his attention. It doesn't mean that I want him to focus 100% on me, but I want him to focus at least 95% on me because that other 5%, he is a prey animal. I want him to be able to tell me if there's danger or there's something I need to be worried about. So as we go through this process is that I want to be able to then pick up this flag wave it around. See how the head went up there? Uh, so I'm going to wait till he brings that head back down or shows me a sign of relaxation. Remember horses can hear a heartbeat from six feet away. So we want to, they can also hear our lungs. So I want to take a deep breath. So I want him to just bring that head down. Even if it's a quarter of an inch, I want him to relax into that. So he took a big breath there, and the head comes down. <clears throat> so I took a, I stopped the flag as soon as he took a big breath because I knew that the head was going to come down and he was going to lick and chew. So my goal is that every time I pick up this flag and do this is that the head doesn't go up. He doesn't worry about that because there's no pressure on him at all to do anything. This is just, this thing might just be blowing in the wind at a show or something. So we want to make sure that he's going to be a dressage horse, so we want to make sure that he doesn't have to be worried about anything going on. If when he goes down center line in a CDI and people are having dinner and talking and silverware is clinking and glasses are clinking, we don't want him to even worry about that. So how do we get that? By teaching him how to self-regulate. If we don't teach him how to self-regulate, we're always going to have this issue. Best time to do it is when they're young. Get it really ingrained in them, just like a child would. You want to ingrain and instill those good things along with the boundaries. Going back with the boundaries of the backup. I ask for the backup. See, guys, the minute I think that backup, I want him to do it. If I put that energy here, then he can come back and be right there. So now if I wave that flag again, see how the head comes up? These are things that if I don't work this out completely where that head doesn't come up when I lift up this flag, then we I know that there's gonna be issues and holes in his training down the road. So when we, we, we invest time into our horses, it's very important. Like I'm not a believer in starting a horse in 30 days and getting them out the door. I don't think it's physically possible unless you have a very special horse that you can get them to feel so comfortable in their skin and how to use their body that you can start them under saddle properly. That's just my opinion. And I'm looking at the long road for your horse. Uh, you might be able to do it through learned helplessness, but then are you really gonna have a true partnership with your horse the way that you want? Or are they just gonna be submitting to you uh, because they have no other choice. Who wants to live life that way? Who wants to just submit to someone because they've got no other choice? I want him to be excited about our journey together. And I want him to look forward to every time I come out here and want to play with him. I want to, so I'm gonna try this move again where I'm just gonna lift my hand up and behind me. Will he just roll the front end across? So, get stuck, now I bring my hand in, or my, my flag in. So I'm gonna ask again, can he just step one over? Good. Uh, so I'm looking for just the front end, not the hind end. So as we break this down, think of it this way, we are deconstructing our horse to reconstruct our horse. Imagine if every time you walked and you waved at somebody, your leg came up in the air. 
So every time, every time, you can be walking down the street, wave at someone, your leg comes up in the air. If we don't have the ability to move our arm separate from our leg or the rest of our body, you see some of these amazing dancers that can really, looks like their, their entire, every inch of their body has its own separate parts because they can move so freely. Um, the, the more that you can move freely in ourselves and in our horse, the more confident we're gonna be, the better we're gonna be. So, hi, buddy. Um, so I'm gonna ask him from this side. Can he back up from this side really easy? So he's a little bit, so I wanna be able to do things from him on both sides. Both eyes. So you see how on his right eye, um, it's a little bit more difficult for him to understand the backup than from the left eye. So I'm gonna go, I just wanna be able to go, hey, just because I'm on the other side of you doesn't mean that anything changes. But in his brain, I'm in a completely different spot for him that's totally different because they don't see like us. So I'm gonna say, can we back up? So it's not just practicing both directions when you get on him and ride him and you do groundwork. It's, um, it's, it's everything we do with him. We want him to understand that I can do things from both sides of you. If I want to ask for a little bit of lateral work, I'll come in with the front and then come in with the hind. So as I start to teach this, I'm going to make sure that I have the front and the hind independently before we do it together. So main point of today is, is to show you what progress he's making, but also to show you that if we start to really break down our horse and get everything we want dialed in with our horse properly, then we have a much better uh, rate of success with our horse down the road and they're going to be happier horse and they're going to enjoy what they're doing. And then you're going to be able to have a horse that's light and responsive, um, but can also relax when it's time to relax. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. If so, hit the three buttons, you know what to hit. Um, take care. Have a great day.